Reputation is a, a word that we all think we understand and that is a common language that companies the world over and governments and so on all worry about. That we all know intuitively that reputation, a good strong reputation, has positive benefits for all the different areas of activity that we need to promote. But in point of fact, you have to be a bit more uh, analytical about it if you're going to try to manage it or to understand what drives reputation. And when you start to get into it, uh, one model that is quite simple and easy to understand and I think is quite helpful in that regard is to think of reputation as having two sides to it. One is identity, which is the way the organisation sees itself and the way it represents itself to the world. And the other side is how the world sees it. So if we're talking about the university here, for example, uh, we have some sense of who we are and what we're trying to convey and a sense of pride in what we do. And that all makes up our identity. And then there are lots of images out there that different stakeholder groups have of us. And ideally, those two things should be uh, converging. We should have a great pride in what we do and a sense of self-worth and we should convey a very clear picture to the world of what we stand for. And if that's done effectively, the world should take on those <laughs> images and should have an equally positive view of us so that there's a harmony and it's all working in our favour. But when, uh, when an organisation suffers a reputational blow due to some neg negative uh, information or whatever, what tends to happen is that there's a mismatch between those things. That you may think you're doing fine and that you know your organisation or your country or whatever <coughs> is still very strong and doing the right kind of things, but somehow the, the noise, the, the information going out there and the images that are being conveyed are negative. And the more negative they are, the more damage it does. And the very complex task then is to try to understand what those negativities are and to try to work on them to build it back up again. Ireland, uh, for a long time during what we uh, called the Celtic Tiger years, for better or for worse, we, uh, our sense of self-identity improved and improved and went up to being almost um, hyperbole, you know, that we thought we were maybe better even than we were. And actually, the rest of the world agreed with us. And there was a point in 2005, which was a kind of a milestone, where The Economist uh, every year does a survey of the best country to live in in the world, and Ireland came tops. And they had a headline that said, the best small country in the world, and had a whole lot of measures <coughs> of why we were the best country. So we all, of course, were delighted with this, uh, those of us who were aware of it, and basked in the glow and thought, yes, indeed, our identity is fantastic. But then, of course, when the financial crash came and when we went down deeper than many other countries because we were so vulnerable with the property bubble and so on, then our identity collapsed and uh, went down, down, down. And there have been various surveys which have actually uh, measured that. I mean, for example, there's a thing called the Edelman Trust Barometer that's carried out every year. And in 2009, Ireland came out as having we ranked lowest of about 40 countries in terms of trust in our own institutions and so on, which said we are at an all-time low, basically. We have no trust in anything. We don't trust government. We don't trust business. You know, it, it was a really low point. Equally, there's another survey called Country Rep Track, you might be aware of, and uh, they measure that uh, conjunction between uh, how other people see us and how we see ourselves. And the normal finding is that countries generally think they're better themselves at home than other people see them. That other people don't know much about you maybe, or you know, you're not high on their radar screen and therefore they just don't have too many images of you. But uh, each year they find there's a few countries where actually at home they, have, they think worse of themselves than external people think of them. And Ireland fell into that camp in the last couple of years where our perception of ourselves on a whole lot of measures was actually far more negative than the perception of outside countries. And indeed, um, that was brought home to us fairly forcibly at the Global Irish Economic Forum, which you know we 
chaired the discussion sessions at that, and I actually chaired the one on reputation. And all of the visitors, the diaspora, said, listen guys, you know, get over it. Uh, the rest of the world is not that focused on you, uh, not half as much as you are yourselves, you're not that important, and anyway, there aren't all those negatives out there that, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a flurry of, of publicity at one stage uh, that said bad things were happening here. The impression has been conveyed out there that you're actually doing pretty well getting over these, that you're, you're the, the good guys in trying to tackle your problems. So uh, move on, forget about it and let your uh, identity, you know, uh, change so that you see yourselves as doing good stuff. And funny enough, I've just been looking at the latest 2012 evidence, for instance, from this Edelman Trust Barometer, and sure enough, our trust in our institutions, particularly in government, since we've had a change of government, has come up considerably. So there's sort of a sense in my mind that we've turned a corner, and that those things that capture our sense of self-worth are hopefully picking up. Uh, and if they pick up, and if we become a bit more confident, and look a bit more confident as we face out into the, the world, our export markets and you know, all the other uh, reasons we, we have to interact with the rest of the world, that if we convey a more confident forward going outlook, then the chances are they will respond to that and that things will start to go on an upward curve.